Hello there guys, <coughs> welcome to Genesis Models live session, our 14th live session. Um, now if you remember, we finished the Wellington, um, hold on, I'll actually go get it. The Wellington we finished last week. Yeah. Now, we finished this bad boy. Well, we sort of got to almost an end stage, and I'll just finish off the little bits here and there. And our Wellington is all nice and done. All the um, uh, masking tape removed from the clear parts, looking pretty, pretty sweet. Um, did like that one, but it's all done now. So we've got a whole new build for our live sessions. Also, I hope you've had um, a good Christmas as well and a, um, a nice new year. Hopefully you've got a load of new kits and you can start building all them uh, um, as well. Now, um, for this live session, we're going to be starting the new build. Um, so let's just get cracking on with that. So let's just play camera just a little bit. Here we go. Uh, probably have a, another little look at the Wellington. Hopefully you're liking that and all the... Um, black paint that we did on there sort of comes out that little bit nicer with a matte coat on so yeah hopefully you're liking that because I'm liking that one as well um, also as always you know get those questions and answers in and I'll do my best to answer them throughout um, this live session but the kit that we're going to be building is a MiG-25 this is the MiG-25 by Eddard. It's 172nd scale. Now we're doing 172nd scale because I kind of thought that um, we've just started a brand new group build at Genesis Models on the forum. Um, and it's basically going to spend the next six months. People are going to be building anything 172nd scale. Um, and then I'll judge it at the end of the six months. So I thought, you know what, we'll start off with... Um, this 172nd scale MiG-25, right? I'm going to be doing the the Biz version, the MiG-25 Biz. Um, so we're going to be starting just here. I'm also going to go for um, this colour scheme, right? A nice Chinese, um, I do believe it was the Korean War. Um, as you can see there, it's all going to be a nice natural metal finish. So that is going to be something to tackle because um, I know natural, natural metal finishes like a subject in its own right in a way. So starting off, right, because actually with the Wellington, we didn't do the cockpit or anything. And that was because I got a bit carried away and I started it before the live session. But we're going to be able to do cockpits this time. All right, so I'll just put that up there. Now, um, a few little basics, right? I just find my sprues because um, I'm missing a sprue. Where the hell's that got? There it is. Right then. So hopefully you're liking this kit actually. I mean, it is kind of like a small one, but um, absolutely gorgeous recess panel line detail on this and lovely rivets as well as you can see from the surface detail so it's going to be a really really nice one this is uh, just a quick sort of start on let's maybe bring you in a little bit closer not too close a little bit off the plane zoom with this camera but here we go we need to cut off uh, piece 44 just here uh, when cutting off pieces it's um i mean a lot of people just go ahead and just go cut in like so but really it is other you kind of like turn around the cutters like so so you leave a little bit of a tab just on the end or you can still cut it this way but just come off of the piece just a little bit to again, it's just all about leaving a little bit of the sprue on there. Um, and this is just so we don't sort of deform the plastic at all and the piece that we actually want. Um, and then 
with a well I mean there's a few ways of doing this I mean I like to come along with a blade and just slowly sort of you know just cut it off maybe a little bit of a scrape I like using a blade for scraping any sort of flash and we basically get that to, to look like it wasn't even on the end of a tab All right but it is good to sort of slowly cut away this tab we've got rather than trying to do it in one big go because it just removes it nicer and cleaner to the point where you you're left with a nice smooth surface on our little piece here um, I have started this a little bit but um, there's still a fair few pieces this also comes with photo etch as well so we're going to be tackling that one of the nights um, but for this one I've just got a bunch of pieces I'm just cleaning up with my blade just here like so as I say, I mean, you can, this is one way, but what you can also do is you can use sanding sticks, which just so happen to have some just here, yeah, nice little skinny sticks, pretty much get them from any online store, All right? We can get our little tab, All right? Sand that away. Right, and then you may want to come in. That was sort of like a, a medium-ish grit. And if I can just find it, we'll have some finer ones. Okay, just here we go. It's always the green one. Here we go. This is like a nice fine grit, so we just sand away at this, and what it'll do is get it all sort of looking nice and smooth like the rest of our plastic just here but personally I find it quicker and easy just to cut away with my blade here we go now for this one because we're going to be doing photo etch um, you want the display panel that's flat and smooth. There is another one that's got all the detail on there if you want to just paint it. Well, we're putting photo etch down, so a nice flat, smooth one. Uh, there is a few of these to get through. This is the kind of time where I like to maybe put on an audio book. All right, and just do all these like a production line quite relaxing but anyway actually what we can do if I just do these engines here because um, there is a little trick we can do with these it is one same second scale so it is small um, I know you can go as much as you want with detail but when it comes to one seventy second scale I mean you know, I, I don't feel like you have to be too sort of tedious with some of the techniques, but we'll do it with this engine anyway. Um, but what it is, is we've got this engine and because it's two halves, right, when we bring them together, we're going to have a seam line. But the problem is with this, I mean, normally a seam line, we can just sand away at it, but the part that we're going to see is actually inside the engine right just inside there we're going to see a little bit of a seam line right just inside there um, and there are ways of taking care of this so i'm going to glue this together first right, which is a little tricky because there's no tabs or anything but yeah let's get out some glue right um Another little basic one here, I like to use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Um, this is the quick setting one as well. I mean, 
there's a few glues in here. We've got the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, good old one. Um, really good stuff. It's better than using your old um, um, like home rug glues. I don't know if you remember them, the poly cement. Um, kind of gets really sort of messy, not much of a professional finish. Uh, and then and you also got the cement s as well um, pretty much oliver brand or type does the same job all right but what i like about these is we don't go off and sort of you know paint down across and then we bring our two pieces together like we did with poly cement because then you get a load of mess and whatnot with this you bring the two pieces together first and because this stuff is so so thin the capillary action just sucks it into the join line all right whoops that is not what you want to do so i'm just being very careful all right so basically you end up getting like a neater job by doing it this way Apart from this piece doesn't have any sort of holes or anything to like bring it together nicely so i've got to position this and maneuver this just so as we get it right in exactly a nice circle shape right feel free to ask any questions in the chat and um i'll answer them as best as i can Right, but what I'm going to do now, right, to start getting rid of inside here where we have um, our seam line just inside, I'm going to start right, by actually painting inside with the Tamurex Spin Cement. Right, really sort of build it up as well. I mean, don't be shy in applying it. And I'm just trying nicely gain there right, just like so that's just going to get it started but you kind of want to let that dry a bit and hopefully we've got a good enough join inside here let's yeah hopefully we're gonna have a good enough join inside there that um we won't need to do any major filling which it does look like we are going to get away with that all right so let's put well actually we could probably put our engine back on here so let's just cut these little tabs off and slowly cut bits of it away so we get a nice finish although we probably don't have to bother so much with this we could probably be as messy as we'd like because um this isn't going to be on show but it is good practice to just, you know, keep in that mindset of, you know, keeping everything nice and clean. Right. Then, again, that's sort of in position. And then the glue goes in, capillary reaction goes all around. And that will glue that in. And I've actually forgot two tabs just here. Right, so we'll let that dry for a bit and then um, we'll have a go see how actually can we actually fit we can just about fit one of these in here but it's it's potentially going to be a little bit tricky but we'll see how we go with that right and then we've got our ejector seat here which again this has photo etch right so yeah we, um, sorry, um, the photo etch is, um, is all kind of already pre-printed, pre-painted, so to speak. All right, so we don't, um, we don't want to be like gluing the photo etch on straight away. We want to paint our plastic pieces and then we glue on our photo etch on top of a nicely painted pieces of plastic. All right. There we go. Although I know some people, they like to like spray their photo etch because 
the colours match up better with what you've been spraying the plastic pieces and stuff but that's totally up to you I know when it comes to photo etch some people do like to just put on the instrument display panel where's my photo etch gun it was here somewhere uh, look at the photo etch here I know a lot of people they like to just you know stick on the um, instrument display panels and maybe leave everything else off because I mean you know the colors can sort of not go right with what you're spraying but I mean that's up to you and that's it so actually that goes on there like there again just a little dab of glue it sucks in nicely and it's it does set pretty quick this is a the um the quick setting version um, i do like this one because it's just the same as their other version apart from it it just dries quicker and it just locks it in quicker and you ain't got to fuss about too much with it right now depending on what color everything is which i've got to just check in a bit depends what we glue in so I'm just tidying these all up getting rid of all the flash and I mean if you do come across any flash which you probably won't so much with this kit I mean I just like to you know basically a 90 degree angle and you just scrape across really sort of lightly and it just nicely removes any sort of flash that there might be which is rather good also um the group build the diorama group build um came to an end also which is why we're starting this new 172nd scale group build that um diorama group build will i'll, I'll be sort of judging that and then announcing the winners to it um <clears throat> when is it sometime next week in a vlog so if you want to find out about that stay tuned for it next week now i'm missing a tiny piece because that's my joystick where's it gone oh. so this is one of these things is with the tiny pieces i've lost one and it's live okay wherever that has gone i ain't too sure let me just double check do you know what it's a very small piece i don't think it's going to make a big deal i don't really want to be spending bunch of time trying to find a little piece like that so i'm just gonna skip it maybe find it later and glue it in all right but this goes together and again with this kit we haven't got any sort of well we've got a little bit of a something that sort of um gets it in the right position but it's it does sort of move a bit so i'm being careful here just nicely touching the seam lines then I've got to push it and move it so it's all um, nice and not looking wonky or anything right <coughs> okay so now we've got our little pieces here Right, so looking at the instructions we do have little arrows on here saying you know pointing upwards that way um, and then on the instructions I'm seeing that that little arrow is facing outwards so I know this is going to slide on there nicely and it's the right way nice little bit of the Tammy extra fin cement there we go and then there is this one at the back which just sits on that little ledge there right so again holding it in position get the tammy extra fin cement on there make sure it's sitting nice 
as you can see, I mean, it does, it does really sort of tack down pretty quickly. You can let go literally like a second or two later, which is rather, rather good. All right, and then we've got these lovely little things here. So I'm not going to glue them on yet, but I'm just sort of test fitting them just to see if it's all lined up, right? Because that was sitting on there, and then we had this little bit of a gap, right, just in there. But if we sort of push it, we then sort of get this really sort of nicer join. Right, and that's just to make sure that that's sort of at the right angle, this back plate here. So that's looking good. Right, so we could probably leave that to dry for a bit. Um, these pieces, they've got a lot of photo etch on them. As you can see, we've got all these little flat areas. Photo etch is going to go on these little flat squares and rectangles and stuff. Um, but we don't want to do that until we've sprayed all of this which if we have a look at the instructions all right it's saying it's what's it saying for color matches hmm no oh here we go um h308 i do believe that's like a a light gray h yeah, just just says grey, but uh, I've got it here actually. Um, H three o eight is um, you know federal standards three six three seven five. Um, you can use this if you want to, um, but personally, uh, I don't get on with these myself. Personally, I like to just you know what, I've got a nice medium C grey just here. I'll probably just spray it all that colour. And I think most of it is just all grey inside, which is rather, rather good, because I'm going to mess about too much. But you do want to just study these instructions, you know, get the colour matches and uh, make sure, I mean, we've got a H5 here, which is blue. So something down here is blue. We've got greys, flat blacks. Yeah, always good. And actually on this side, it's silver. I think that's the air intakes that are going to go in there. So um, we probably want to spray them as well on the other side. But yeah, I think we're good for that. Now if we come back to... Um, a little air intake here. I'm looking inside here. I don't know where well you can see in there, but by putting those big sort of blobs inside there, it sort of sealed it quite nicely. I don't think you can. Maybe you can. It's well, it's hard to see because it's it's sealed quite nicely. Um, remember any questions and answers? I'm just going to read your comments. Uh, looks like we've got some people who've actually got this kit in their stash. It is a, a very nice kit. Um, we've got the Perch Master here. He's saying um, with a lack of uh, model shops in his area, uh, is there any particular online sites where you can buy Tamiya and other branded paints from? Um, it depends what country you're from, um, but here in the UK there is there is actually loads of really nice online shops. Um, if I just quickly click onto my web browser, I can name a couple out to you. We've got Hanans. Hanans is one of the big ones in the UK. They sell um, quite a bit of Tamiya stuff there. I've got all my um, pots of paints from there. Um, what else have we got? Uh, we've got also graphicair.co.uk. They're good for like um, airbrushing stuff and paints and whatnot. Um, what else have we got? Just keep, um, there was models are go, but I 
think they've shut down now, which is a rather a bit of a shame. Um, there's a scale model shop.co.uk. Um, they're also good. Uh, Aircraft.net. They're a good one also. Um, just going through my stuff. Everything airbrush.com. And then I do believe there's Sprue Brothers in the US also. Yeah, so th there is a lot out there. Um, those are a, um, a couple of I've um, been to and brought stuff from um, and know they've got good customer service. I've even spoke to some of the people who like own the place and stuff. Um, you know, they're pretty good, well-trusted online stores. But anyway, back to... And I'm hoping I can get my sanding stick inside of here, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do. So I'm just, if I, um, let's, let's cut this a little bit. Again, these sanding sticks, from any of those online stores, you could probably get these sanding sticks from. But if I just cut this basically to size by cutting that little bit off, no big deal because I mean that was pretty worn anyway. Right, hopefully this will fit in here. Fingers crossed. No, it doesn't look like it's going. So if I get my cutters out and maybe cut this bit off just here and then hopefully it will just peel away like so. Right, because actually, I mean, as a little tip, these skinny sticks, they do get worn, and a lot of the time, I mean, we always seem to use the end, and it's always the end that sort of gets worn. Just get your cutters, like so, and it's just so easy to cut the end off, and you basically, you've probably got a nicer end again. It So, you know, don't worry about cutting up your sanding sticks. They, um, it just kind of helps and saves on there so I'm just sort of now sanding inside here which I don't think it needs much of a sanding right because it is a good good join uh, and uh, Nigel has made a good point as well Amazon and eBay um, I, I do actually personally use eBay a lot myself because you can normally get the best prices there um, but then again actually I mean when getting pots of paint off eBay it can be a bit of a pain because they sometimes sort of charge a postage and packaging for one pot of paint and if you want to buy about 10 pots yeah it can get a bit expensive Right then, give that a blow. It's looking a little bit better. Uh, I do have some of these these ones, which are probably going to come in handy. I think I bought these from Model Model Design Construction. I think I got these from. Right, they're basically just nice and pointy for getting into some really hard to reach places. They do wear out pretty quickly, but um, I find that. I don't often use them, but when I do, they really do help. And that is actually working a lot better in there now. Um, if you just come in, the kit we're doing is Eddard's 170 second scale MiG-15 and this is the biz version let's get this one in here just to polish it up a bit in fact I'm gonna finding I'm, I'm not getting in there as good as I'd like to so if I'll just cut that off and then maybe getting out a metal foil Maybe this will just push it down just nicely enough to get enough pressure down to, to sand it. 
This is very tricky because it's such a small hole. Which is why I say when it comes to 170 second scale, I don't really, I mean, you know, you can. I don't really sort of go overboard with 170 second scale because it's so small. I mean, these things are normally hardly noticeable. It's like, you know, you go up to 170, 148 and 130 second and, you know, things get more noticeable. So you don't necessarily have to do this if you don't want to, is what I'm saying. It is a little tricky, but that is looking better. Maybe a little mark there, I'll just clean that up. Right then, hopefully you can sort of see, looking nice and clean in there now. Took a bit of time, but it just gives it that professional edge. And I'm just gonna tidy up my workstation because it's one thing we all seem to not do and then you end up with all these tools around you and then you're working in this tiny little space. So it is good to tidy up as you go. Um, Andrew's asking about the sanding sponges. Um, they are from, um, they're called the, the sand, uh, Flurry Models sanding sticks. Um, as I say, you can get them from pretty much any online store. They all seem to, to, to stock them. Um, and there's other brands out there as well, which do this sort of a similar -ish thing. Right, so I'm not going to glue that on. I think we can glue this on. It goes on the underside. Just goes nicely in there. Might get that into a bit of spraying in a sec. Get that a little press in. Right, we want to keep that separate because that's going to be flat black, the um, instrument display panel. This is going to be all grey. Our ejector seat needs to be... It looks like it's all grey and the, the spongy bit, the padding area is going to be black. These are going to be grey and the opposite side is going to be silver. Okay, the joystick. Probably shouldn't glue this in yet, but I'm finding that I'm losing my little bits. So I'm just going to glue this in now. Although I probably shouldn't, so I'll probably break it, but there we go. That's in there. So let's get out our airbrush now. Put the lid on to our Tamiya Fin Cement. Yeah, you should know how bad that is if you've ever spilt them. They are quite nasty. Getting out kitchen paper towel, ready for some spraying. Let's get our pieces so we can see them a bit more clearly. Probably inside here is probably going to be a nice... Uh, oh, it's a dark iron inside there. That should be quite easy to do. Right then, getting out our airbrush, I'm at about 20 psi. I'm using my um, Evolution uh, CR Plus. Oh, welcome VDBO. Um, I remember you from the, the forum. Uh, it's kind of funny how you've um, you think about doing the same kit, which I do recommend actually, it is a smashing kit. Well anyway, I'm just going to like crack on, um, not going off doing major, I mean, in modelling, I mean, you could go off and do loads of research into what colours you want to do. Um, the instructions say it's 308 by um, the hobby colour. I'm just going to throw down some medium C grey. I mean, it's up to you if you want to go the, the whole hog. But I am live and I don't want to spend an hour researching exact paint colours, so I'm just eyeballing this one. It's no big deal, I mean, again, it's 170 second scale. Plus, I mean, you just go as far as you want when it comes to modelling. You can be really detailed, you can 
go with it counting. You can go as far or as not as far as you like. Right, so with a bit of sal uh, not sal um, with a bit of homebrew thinners just in there. Then I'm going to pour in our medium sea grey. Right, maybe a little bit more than that. I probably should prime this, but I'm going to sort of skip the priming because you know what, you can get away with it. I know we always teach to prime things, but I don't mind. You know, if you want to skip it, you can skip it. You know, just checking some any questions. Um, got a question from Andrew. I mean, you're saying you're having problems with model air. Um, if you could be a bit more specific, I'll um, maybe sort of go over them with you and maybe sort of help you out with using them. Right, and this just under here, this area isn't going to be on show, so I'm using my tree, uh, locking tweezers to hold it. Now I've stirred up my 50-50 mix with model air. I'm just checking how it's coming out the airbrush and then I can just spray this down. Right now I'm starting off with a very sort of nice light coat, light misty coat, just to get the paint starting to stick. Um, and you can probably hardly see that go down. And actually while I'm at it, we've got our other pieces here which um, let's get out um, some cocktail sticks with blue tack on um, now one side has got to be gray one side's got to be silver so i'm just going to put the blue tack on the side that needs to be silver and we can just simply swap them over once we've sprayed them and we object to see it here um this one's looking a little bit tricky where's that glue on just to see how it fits. Uh, maybe we'll do the whole drill a hole. It is rather small for drilling a hole, but if we're careful, we can just maybe pinch a little hole. Ooh, then again, it's gonna be close. I'm not sure if I wanna risk it, but I'm just gonna, hmm. No, it's just going to go right through. It's just too small, that is. So, who are we going to hold you? Let's try a little bit of blue tack and a cocktail stick on the underside. Because that's going to be the side that's going to be glued to the model. This is going to be quite delicate oh then again i've got another trick that i've used before in the past let's get a plain cocktail stick just cut the end off make the surface a little bit bigger and then very quickly popping out some super glue all right just put a little blob on the end Because it's super glue, it's not like Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Tamiya Extra Thin Cement melts the two pieces of plastic together and then they become one. Whereas um, super glue is just, it's, it's just holds them together. So you can break it and it snaps and you can get like a nice clean break or you could just maybe like afterwards sand it up or something like that. All right, so that should help there because that was a small piece. So let's continue spraying along. Nice light mist coat to start with. Cut to air to dry it off a bit. And the same with all the rest. Nice light and misty just so the paint just starts to go down it sticks to the plastic better so then 
the other coats that we're going to do in a bit will adhere to the model and a lot, lot better. And then we can sort of spray inside here. It's a little bit tricky to get in there. A little blast inside there won't hurt. And then I've got to work out which way this goes. So that goes that way. And I'm just trying to get it to position. That's going to go in there. Okay, so we ain't going to worry about the back of this. So we can come in with again with some more blue tack. Just reading some comments. Okay, um, about the model air, um, the problem you're saying you're having is it's um, becoming uneven and pooling up. Um, that sounds more like how you're spraying than actually the paints themselves. Because um, as I've sort of been just showing you, we've put down a light misty coat. It doesn't look wet. It, hardly looks like the paint's gone down and as i say that's going to allow the paint to stick better and then i'm going to come in with a light misty coat uh, sorry a, a light coat now where you start to see the color go down it looks a little bit wet but as soon as you start seeing it look wet stop spraying the last thing you want to be doing is you know just keep on spraying and spraying and spraying until you know it's all wet and it's just blowing and it's pooling up um i mean you probably it's probably not like that how you're getting it but it's sort of showing you a bit of an example of just how you know if you kind of just whack on the paint and it's going down really wet it can start to pull pull up so it's just all about that first misty coat then a light coat if it's looking wet move along spray somewhere else don't keep spraying on it because it will just build up and build up right you want to sort of get your cut you want to sort of get your coverage with a good couple of coats you don't want to be you know in the first or second coat be having good coverage because it's just your paint's just going down too wet Everything just sticks better and goes down better with lots of little coats. All right, so I'm just working my way through these. Feel free to get in any more questions and answers. I don't think we're going to probably get any um, photo etch done, but um, next week we should be all good for you know um, hopefully get maybe doing some weathering doing some photo etch nice and live because i mean the one thing that you probably don't see when i'm on camera doing stuff like photo etch photo etch is a right bit of a raw pain because it's very fiddly it's all tiny uh, and when i'm normally filming it's just like because i cut everything it's sort of i'll show you how to do it and it goes on um, but in reality you can spend like 15 minutes fiddling around with one little bit trying to get it to go down because they're so small and fiddly and, and just simply being metal as well they, they can be a royal pain so basically by seeing it live you can sort of see me go through it um, the way I really sort of would in a sense but yeah I'm probably up to like my third coat here and we're sort of looking good I'm even spraying the areas that need to be silver because it'll just act as a primer I mean, go worry about masking up or getting over spray. Let's try and get down here. Give it a little spray inside, not too much, because 
because it's such a confined space I mean you'll just pull up really quick Oop, just like that so easily done but we can wipe it up because we ain't going to see the outside we're just going to be seeing the inside so not looking too bad we've got to spray that a silverish kind of color There we go, one last little coat. Let's quickly blast on this last little coat. There we go. I've actually just um, finished filming tomorrow's vlog that will be going live um, tomorrow. Um, so be around for that because if you remember there was a competition for the um, Real Colours of World War II book a lot of you like that I'm going to be announcing the winner for that as well as a new competition to go out as well Right, so I think that's enough coats just there All Right, it's, it's just needs a bit of drying time there so let's just clean out our airbrush. I've got a little bit of paint in the bottom of there. Um, no big deal. I mean, some people do ask, you know, can you sort of pour your paint back into um, your pots? Um, I would say yes, if you're using the manufacturer's thinners. If you've used a different thinners or a homebrew thinners, it's best just to pour it away not um, better not take the risk because sometimes I can like after they've sat for you know so many days or weeks or months that can sort of go a bit funny so using some of the homebrew um, airbrush cleaner we're now going to pour some of that into there gonna as always I like to take the the guard off for this so we can like clean the needle end a little bit better and then push down for air, pull back to just gurgle it up. Don't have it gurgling so much that it starts spitting. Just enough so it just has a little bit of a gurgle and that'll just work into all the parts and clean it up rather nicely. Um, Sundown has just said um, about not using a primer for the cockpit. Um, yeah, I mean, as I said before, I mean, I should you know, you should kind of, you should always use a primer, just, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you can get away with it. I mean, the whole point of a primer really is um, it just makes it a better surface for your paint to stick to, right? They normally sort of got a bit of a different formula in there, so it's sort of smoother and better and sticks better. Um, but, you know, I mean... I started off with like not using primers and sometimes you can get away with it. Um, you know, it's sort of like a personal choice really. But um, yeah, as I say, you can get away with it. I mean, a lot of the time, because if you remember in the past, you used to sort of have to clean all your sprues because they had like an oily residue on them. You have to do it still with, with resin. Um, and I find with primers, you can sort of get away with not having to like um, wash them but I mean these days um, the oil you don't really get the oily stuff they do actually clean them these days but yeah you, you should really prime everything really there we go second gurgle Tip it upside down, get any of the bits out of the colour cup end. Then we can just start spraying it through till it comes out nice and clear. Right, in which case, silver is up next. Which I think I'm going to use a nice quick silver, nothing like fancy. Uh, although, I want to let this properly dry before I take the blue tack off, put it this side to then spray this side the silver. So I'll probably leave that to dry um, for probably later because um, time's a ticking. Um, we've got to paint this a black. 
and we've got a bit of blue and black in here to paint also so you know what I'll, sh I'll show the last bit of painting before the end um, and Smith is asking um, what is the best thing to thin acrylic paints for airbrushing um, to be honest with you I mean I know it's a little bit sort of maybe big headed but the um, homebrew thinners that I did is really good um, it's just because it's so simple pretty much any of the manufacturers out there I mean I've got loads of different manufacturers of paint and um, homebrew thinners seems to do anything and everything and I think that is just because it's so simple um, and even with some of the manufacturers I know Hanans for a start this thinners works better than their own thinners um, and it is I do think because the, the, it's very simple it is simply um, I do believe it's one part IPA three parts water and then you can add a bit of flow improver or retarder to, to it or if you want to very simple ingredients there is um, um, a really good tutorial on this on Genesis Models website under the tutorial sections on how to make it. Um, so go check that out, genesismodels.co.uk. Um, so just jumping in with a quick bit of painting, a little bit of black paint. Let's get out um, a little something to pour this on. Make sure you give it a good shake. I'm using the army painter just here which is matte black I do like to use these when it comes to actual brush painting so just a little bit on there because we're only doing a little bit and then with my paintbrush just dipping it into a bit of water and we want to thin it right because it is quite thick if we paint this on thick it's going to leave brush strokes Ooh. Right, so let's bring you in nice and close for this. Right, because we don't want brush strokes. So, um, I mean, thinning it is is well, it's, it takes a bit of experience, but um, just just fit, you want to thin it so as it's going on nice and smooth. Right, you're not seeing any brush strokes going down. It's not looking too thick. Yeah. But, you know, there is some sort of coverage to it. I mean, you don't want to thin it down so much that you've just got no coverage going on and you need to do about 50 coats. But, I mean, if it's, you know, you can go off and thin it down and maybe do two or three coats, right? Um, that's coverage good enough, if you ask me. Just a last little bit there. And there we go, nice, simple, and easy. Easy. Um, the basics, I know it sounds basic just thinning down your paint, but I mean, really, you know, it it is like the foundation of kind of like brush painting. Get the get it thinned down to the right consistency. You can paint it on nicely, um and, and you're away, and then you can go into other stuff like weathering and stuff, but nice and simple, thin your paint down. Right, so I'm going to paint that up a bit more. I'm going to um, maybe put another coat of it on. There is a little bit of blue just inside here and sort of get our silver sprayed on. Um, don't worry about that, me doing it off camera because we're going to be touching up on natural metal finishes a lot in this um, live sessions for this build. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it for tonight so if we just bring you back down to the face cam um, so nice little sort of start on this I'll have this a little bit more better prepared I think for next week to get our photo it's going on bringing this together and probably you know hopefully do some um, filling and sanding and stuff it is a very small build so it does come together rather rather quickly and um, as I mentioned at the beginning it was the 172nd scale GB that you guys voted for on the Jesus Models forum. So that's going to be the next group build here at G 
Genesis models to go nicely with our live session here. Um, the vlog for that will be up tomorrow, right, where I'm going to be announcing the winner of last month's competition. I do also announce the next group build, but you know, I've just announced it here. Um, next week, we're going to be having another vlog, which will be announcing the winners of uh, the last group build in uh, the second half of 2018 for the diorama group build. So stay tuned for that. Um, and as always, next week on a Friday at six o'clock, we'll be going live here at Genesis Models. Um, and if you're interested, um, we have been our, on our other build going on here. We have our um, FA18 that is getting all nicely sprayed sprayed up and um, we'll be seeing some of that next week as well as some inbox views and all that goody stuff and if you haven't seen it because you wasn't here at the beginning um here is our wellington all nicely completely and utterly finished from what we was working on um in the last live session so that's all nice and done that'll go nicely in my display cabinet but um if there's no more questions oh we might have one Okay, yeah, um, questions about natural metal finishes. Um, asking whether uh, I'm going to be using the acrylic range um, or like a lacquer's range um, because of like, you know, acrylics are safer and stuff. Uh, I must say the Vallejo metal colour airbrush range, really good. I mean, if you want something that is really good natural metal finish, but it's acrylic based. I mean, this is probably the best stuff you could probably get out there. Um, but admittedly, I do like using stuff like Extreme Metal by AK. I do like the old Alclads too. Um, they are really good. Um, but yeah, maybe I might try this out just to, to see. We'll, we'll see how we get on anyway, but um, they, they are a good range that um, Galejo do do there um and we also oh and god wow so many paints to pick from we'll, we'll, we'll have to see i haven't really decided in your life um but anyway um hopefully you've enjoyed um this live session here at jenny smalls i'll see you next week but until next time my name is bobby ward in this jenny smalls and i hope you've enjoyed